Okay, everyone, uh, this is not going to be your typical video that I use. I'm not going to actually get anything done in this video. This is me asking for some advice or opinion on some things. Now, this is a Ram 2500. This is a 2021. If you don't know, the freaking videos like crazy. The links are in the description. We got 50 videos on this truck, this build I've been doing for, geez, almost two years now. So, so check it out. Now, I haven't done anything underneath the hood other than electrical, like hooking up lights, and a winch and that sort of stuff. But I'm thinking about some other things. But I don't exactly know how to go to go about it because Ram, they really kind of did something stupid in my opinion. This truck, if you don't know, I mean, it's the exact same truck as the Cummins version. This is the Hemi, this is the 6.4. In the Cummins, you got two batteries, right? The second battery is there. So you'd think to yourself, okay, when they put the Hemi in, it's a tiny engine compared to the Cummins, it's a huge engine, <laughs> but it's tiny compared to the Cummins. They have this open spot where somebody could put a second battery. Well, guess what? They freaking put a whole bunch of garbage in that spot. So I don't know really what to do here. I wanna put a second battery in. So let's take a look at that spot. And we'll also talk about something else I was thinking about doing but it sort of seems worthless. Um, I don't know, let's go underneath the hood. Let's talk about the battery first, okay. This is the location where one of the batteries would be on a Cummins. The air box is in the same location as the Hemi, and I believe the coolant reservoir is in the same location as well. Clearly, on a Hemi, you don't need two batteries. It's a 12 volt system. They removed this battery. They kept that one over there on the driver's side. You'd think this would be just an open spot where you could throw another battery in. But of course, Ram said, hey, let's just totally screw with Nick and let's put the freaking ECM right here. So that's what they did. They threw the ECM here. It's all grounded up right here. There's a million wires. I see two options. One is, is that maybe somebody makes a system that covers this thing and creates a location for a battery or maybe someone has relocated this. And that's my question for you. Two, two things. Does somebody make something that goes in this spot? Does anybody know of a company? I looked, I can't find a damn thing. It's gotta be extremely, extremely specialized if somebody does make it, which means it's probably a fortune. Sorry if I was blocking it there. And the other thing is, has anybody ever re relocated this or built something? You know, maybe you you built something that goes over this. Or, I mean, the way I see it is, is that to relocate this, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be that hard if you unmount it and turn it like this. And you mount it to the side of a bracket system that goes in here and holds the battery. That's my initial idea. Um, and I don't know, maybe if you get rid of the air box and you put a, 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 just a regular like cold air intake, it would be smaller and that would give you more room. There is not a ton of room in here. Let me, let me measure it. Right now from the, the res to the edge of this air box is 12 and a half inches. Now I don't think you'll be able to see this, but I'm gonna measure the battery and I'm gonna try not to touch the Oh, would you believe that? It's freaking 12 and a half inches. Okay, so it's it's extremely tight. The the battery is 12 and a half inches and this spot is 12 and a half inches. Can this air box move? Doesn't really seem like it. So it's it probably would have to go this way. Can't go this way, it would have to go this way. Um which would help with the relocation of this. Take it off and put it here. Has anybody ever done that? That's my question. Or does somebody make some sort of system that I could get? Um, all right, let's move on to my next question, and that is snorkel. First of all, let me tell you why I'm thinking of it, because I'll be honest with you, I've always kind of been like blah about the snorkel. But I recently watched a video, it kind of scared me, and I'll link it in the description. Basically a guy in Australia, F-250, diesel is a power stroke. He freaking has a million dollars into this truck and he didn't put a snorkel on. And, and of course, he, he lost.
lock the engine up. Uh, if you just drove through a river, sucked it up, boom, done. And that, you know, that doesn't ruin the car, but clearly it's a lot of money. It's, it's a ton of money on the power stroke. It wouldn't be as much on the Hemi, but still, uh, it's, it's a whole bunch of money. And uh, snorkels, they aren't a lot. If you do the installation yourself, if you, if you have to get the installation done, it's going to cost a bunch of money. I bet you somebody probably charges 1500 bucks to put that thing in because they got to cut. You're, you're paying for somebody to cut a hole. If you don't know, it, you cut a hole right here. A hole is cut. And this panel needs to come off. And this is body work. It really, I mean, it's, it's, it's an in-depth installation. The snorkel comes through here, right? You cut the hole and then the intake part of it is right behind this not inside this is important because of what i just mentioned about this battery second battery if the thing went through here then we'd have a problem but it doesn't it goes through here and then it enters the air box right on this side now here is my confusion and i want to know if anybody has any information on this even the that's what the aev does that's what it that's exactly how it goes it goes it goes right behind this panel and then it goes through um, the framing here and it goes right into the airbox. My confusion is is that it does not replace the airbox. This airbox, I believe, is still connected right here to this intake and air can still come through here, right? And can and still comes the the snorkel isn't a new way for air to get into the engine. It's a second way. Am I right or am I wrong here with this? Which means if you come down with the truck and you, this, is how, this is how it happens, you go in real fast, it splashes water up onto, the, onto, the, uh, onto this grill and boom, it just sucks it right into the engine. That's what ends up happening. That's it. Now you don't have a problem really when, you're not gonna have a problem if the water's here. But you're not gonna have a problem. It's, it's what happened, this is such a big truck that when you enter water and you're coming in on an angle, it pushes that water, displaces it, and it goes right up into here. It creates like a wave. I mean, you just watch any freaking river crossing uh, video, you'll see it. If it can't stop that, then what is the use of a snorkel? Can anybody help me here? <laughs> Why is it called a snorkel? <laughs> it's not a snorkel, am I right? Or is there some sort of system that goes along with it where maybe if you go off-roading, you could turn it off. You could block this thing off. My, pro my confusion is, is that I don't think a snorkel is enough air. I mean, you're talking about air is, why, why didn't I move this? Air is coming in from here. All the, you can't even see it, Rob. Right? right? It's coming in from here, up here. And it's got to travel all the way through here and make turns. Ah, that doesn't make any sense to me. Of course, this freaking thing locked. <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense to me how this could be the only air source up here, so far away from the engine. And the, the thing is only, what, a four inch pipe? Let me pop this hood again. So basically, if, if it doesn't do anything to remove this, the snorkel is a gimmick. That's what it is. It's a gimmick. That's, that's what I believe. Now, if you want to say, oh, okay. And, and a lot of people say, oh, I get it for, for dust. I get it for, it doesn't matter. Unless you're getting rid of this, it doesn't matter. A snorkel seems like a gimmick to me. Um, but I have to say, I wish it wasn't. Because it, you know, do I do river crossings? Not that much, no. But I go to the beach and drive on the beach a lot. And something could happen where I get stuck and we could have an issue. It can absolutely happen. Um, and for the money one of these things costs, well, I mean, they, they don't cost that much, but maybe that's because they don't do anything. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about like 500 bucks. For 500 bucks and I install it, I could save the engine. But it seems to me like it's a gimmick. Can anybody help me out here? Explain the system. Um, I mean, you go to AEV and they don't give you anything. Um, they don't give you any information, which leads me to believe it is a gimmick. 
It's, it's always when you don't get the information. That's a good tip for about anything, about anything in life. If there's inf information missing, uh, be wary of that. All right, everyone, I, I, you know, I, those are the two things, is, is that, what can I do about the second battery here? Does any, has anybody ever relocated this computer or have some sort of system that goes over the computer? And the snorkel, has anybody put in a snorkel, know anybody that's done it? And how is it really a snorkel? Or is it just looks? A really expensive, like, looks mod. Um, all right, everyone. Uh, different type of video, but I need information. And also, this is an insight into what I'm thinking about, where I'm going with the truck. All right, everyone. Catch you later.